Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and welcome to my April 2019 horoscope report for you, where I will give you the need to knows for your sign, as well as talk extensively about the general transit energies, the conflicts between them, where they're rolling together, and how you can best use this knowledge of the energies to have the most graceful, productive month possible. Definitely go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, where you can check out my blog. Among other things, I have every month things about the new moon, the full moon, and how best to use those wonderful energies and lots of other things there. If you'd like to book a live reading or sign up for my astrology apprenticeship program, you can also do that at AnnieHelpsYou.com. Definitely check out my new book, Radical Prayer, Transform Your Life and the World in 28 Days, which is an Amazon bestseller. So what's going on this month for you? I'm going to show you the charts that I used to uh, figure out the information that's most important for you. So the, the layout of the rest of the video will be, I'll show you in detail for the early, middle, and late degree placements, what you can expect for this month, important themes, and best ways to use the energy. Then we'll transition back to talk about the general transits and I'll give you the dates to note and all kinds of other things you need to know for this month. Okay, so for April 2019 for Virgos, we've got a major relationship focus. We've got full seventh and eighth houses for all early, middle, and late degree placements. And there's energy of water in these placements, so bringing emotion, strong emotion in relationships, for better or worse. And there's also a lot of fire energy bringing action in relationships. So a lot of emotion, a lot of activity, there will be a desire to take some decisive action. And as long as you're sure, that is perfect. I'll go into more details about how the blending of the energies this month are, are sort of action oriented, but then there's a lot of uncertainty. So just the theme of this time is really just be really sure before you take action so that you can use the energy in the best way. Okay, so breakthroughs, um, working in cooperation with people, important contacts or having people help you, like someone that you need to help you or getting more clients or establishing a, a networking base. This month is amazing for all of that. There's also amazing energy for needing to get money from somebody. So borrowing money or if you're loaning money or anything having to do with spousal money, family money, inheritances, or support from somewhere else. And this can also include like non-financial support. So like someone who's well-connected could help to promote your work in a major way. So that the, this house of other people's resources, it's also called other people's money, but this house of other people's resources is beautifully lit up. So any, any way that you can use other people's resources to support your goals or support you, those are the kind of energies that are coming very much into the forefront this month. We have a continued focus of expansion on the fourth house, which is home and family. And even now you late degree placements. Now the designations for early, middle and late are as follows. If you're in the basically August born Virgos are early and then around September 1st through 10th, you're middle and then late degree are it's around September 11th through the rest of the sign. If you're watching for your rising or moon and you know the degree, then the zero through nine is early the 10 through 19 degrees is middle and the 20 through 29 degrees is late. So those of you who are in the late placement, you tend, well not tend to, you will always get these transits later than other, the rest of the Virgo placements. So if you're there on the September 11th and after or 20 to 29 degrees, you haven't been having Jupiter expanding your fourth house of home and family and your inner world and your childhood psychology and home related investment projects or home related things or working from home things, anything um, with any home and family tilt. Jupiter wasn't expanding that section for you until now. So you might have had some whispers of that energy as of 2019, but now Jupiter has gotten close enough where it's influencing. And even though it is going to go retrograde, so the blessings that it's planning on bringing there, they're, they're sort of getting sprinkled in now, um, and then they'll come back later in the year. This is putting you at a very powerful crossroads because um, and this is specifically the late degree placements where expansion of your home or expansion of your work are in conflict with one another. So this polarity of home versus work. And also there's a lot of pressure um, on the relationship 
like as things are expanding relationship all of your relationships and yourself your image your own physical body so late degree Virgo placements are at a very major crossroads and for all Virgo placements now the energy of expansion in the home um, is prominent so as Jupiter goes into retrograde it tends to often bring in the very overt expansion back into like working behind the scenes so if you've been moving along like with deep inner work because the fourth house is the inner psychology house or something home or family related if it seems like you've hit some snags don't worry it's probably just Jupiter making sure that your foundation is strong so that when it goes back direct in a few months that it can continue the expansion spree. So Jupiter retrograde is a really nice time to kind of like have things be pulled in to evaluate the expansion that's occurred and prepare you for future expansion. We have for the early degree placements, so those of you like August born or zero through nine degrees, Mars is starting to light up your 10th house of work. Now the middle and late degree placements, you have this coming soon. So listen up because if it's not happening for you right at the beginning of April, it's definitely coming. So whenever, wherever Mars goes, it brings this restlessness, this need for action. Sometimes it brings a strong focus or it brings opportunities or it brings recognition, but the work sector is very much becoming accentuated. Because Mars is in Gemini, it can add to some ambivalence or some like uh, even crossroads decisions where you have these different options and you're not sure which ones to take. So in some ways that can be good in business and work, right? Because this increases the odds that you'll have lots of options, um, but it doesn't necessarily add to the clarity about what you're supposed to do. Remember, as I talked about before, what we really want for you this month is to take action on the things you're clear about. So that's going to be like more mid-month and after where the energies start to gel a little bit, but of course follow your own rhythm. For the middle and late degree placements, you still have Mars accentuating the ninth house for a while longer. So you feeling gung ho about teaching and learning and education and long distance travel, international travel, international business, getting more into the international scene, publishing, speaking, things like that, being out in front of people. Those middle and late degree placements, you still have quite a boost from Mars um, in that arena before it really sets foot in that work sector. Now, for those of you who have ninth house related work, you're going to have an extended period of time of Mars working in those sectors because as Mars is expanding the ninth house, if you have ninth house work, it's also expanding your work. So ninth house work is teaching, learning, traveling, um, international things, publishing, things like that. Okay, so those are the things that are most on my mind for Virgo placements. I will drop in here after this segment a quick visual just so that you can see what I was talking about with the um, how for the late degree placements where Jupiter is and just some of those other things that I was talking about so you can have the visual of it because I know that you've been enjoying that so I'm going to go into that and then after that I'll go in back to me for the video to talk more about general transits okay so let's go into all of that now okay so here are the visuals um, We've already talked about whether you're early, middle, or late degree, so you know this by now. Okay, so what I wanted to show you, see how Jupiter is just now getting into the fourth house. And then it's going to go retrograde and go back here, but you're going to still feel the influence in the fourth house for a while, and then it will come back. Whereas the middle degree placements, you've had Jupiter there, expanding home and family, and the early degree has been very, very solidly in the fourth house. Okay, so now you can see that there. The next thing I wanted to show you the visual for was the Mars thing. Okay, so you can see as we start out the month for early degree placements, Mars is right there. And for you middle degree placements, see it's got a little ways to go. And then late degree placements, it's dropped more back here. So Mars bringing oomph, bringing, you know, um, busyness and restlessness and activity is it's going to be in this ninth house sector for you middle and late degree placements for a little longer before it starts to really get into that work sector the other thing i wanted to give you the visual on is just this general like okay so here's late this general fullness in the seventh and eighth houses which is the relationship houses which we started out the reading talking about 
Okay, so you can see there how full that is, all of that energy. So long and short term, massive amount of energy for Virgos in the relationship sector, and that's both one-on-one -on -one relationships and relationships with other people, um, with money, etc. So we talked about the implications there, but I just wanted to give you the visual so that you can see for yourself, like, wow, lots of relationship stuff. Okay, so now I want to talk about the general transit, so I'm going to go back to the video where I can explain um, the spirit of the energies this month and how there are some conflicts and how you can navigate around them. So let's go into all that now. So the theme for April 2019 for the general transits is the urge for action, but dot dot dot. And I will explain in detail as to why I'm calling it that. So the astrological new year begins at the end of March each year. And at that time, the sun moves into Aries, which is the astrological new year. Shortly after, or sometimes coinciding with, in this case, shortly after, the sun moves into Aries, other personal planets, meaning the ones that are closest to us, start moving into Aries. So the sun will start out the month in Aries, Midway into the month, we'll have Mercury, then Venus is going to follow shortly after in Aries. So all of this action energy will make you want to do something. So adding to the drive for action, Mars is going to be in Gemini. Mars is how we use our energy and Gemini is all over the place and it's always really busy. It's thinking, it's talking, it's doing, and it's restless. So we've got Aries energy, which is among the most restless in the zodiac. We've got Gemini energy, which is among the most restless in the zodiac, combining together, and people are going to want to talk and move around and go places and do things. Plus, we will have just gotten out of a um, watery, mercury retrograde covered month of March, and people are going to be ready for some action. So this energy all combined can be great for getting things done, but there is a hurriedness about it. Um, and a recklessness and sometimes an, uh, um, not paying attention. So it increases the chances for accidents or doing something, you know, slip ups in ways that, um, that aren't positive. So you definitely want to be more careful, pay more attention, add some breath, add some consciousness to um, all of this oomph energy because you really need to take more caution. This month carries some awkwardness in the way that, although we have all this fire energy and then the important air energy in the Gemini, they'll, there will be all of this like pent up energy to do things, but because there's still energy in Pisces that's transitioning over, this water energy, specifically in Pisces, can bring more of a an abstractness, like an uncertainty, an inner um, focus, and just really not feeling sure. So when you have the combination of like, you need to do something, but you don't know exactly what to do, then that can cause a lot of wasted energy, just putting a whole bunch of energy into something and then a couple of weeks later realizing as the Mercury retrograde post shadow transit energies shift mid month, that actually the direction is completely different. So you're going to be chomping at the bit at the beginning of April and say, oh, Mercury is direct, time to do stuff. But I, I'm just, I really want you to hear that in that first couple of weeks, try to find your certainty before you take action and commit. Mid-month is much better for committing, it's much better for certainty, it's much better for clarity. So the more that you can uh, be sure about what you're doing instead of doing for the sake of itself, the better. And the more you can tune into the um, inspired action rather than action just for the sake of itself. So like tuning into what spirit wants you to do rather than you just being so whacked out that you have to do something. So, you know, going to the gym, exercising, doing things that can get this energy out. But of course, be careful when you're doing those things as well, that it's not too aggressive and you don't hurt yourself. So definitely watch the signs and the synchronicities closely because those will be the things that can help um, match, match you with the best path. The other thing that's going on this month is that Jupiter is in retrograde, is moving into retrograde, and it's going to be there for months, okay? And when this happens, the expansion frenzy that was occurring before then starts to stop, basically. And sensitive people may have felt this even earlier because the, there is a pre-retrograde tra pre transit shadow 
or shadow transit before Jupiter goes retrograde as well. So if you're finding that even in the open window of February, the end of January and February, if you were starting to slow down, your, your ambitions were starting to slow down, that could have been Jupiter getting ready to go into retrograde. And so during this time, having kind of a break from the long unbridled expansion spree can be a benefit because you can take stock and evaluate. So pulling in carefully to evaluate the next steps is a really good move. It doesn't mean you can't do anything or shouldn't do anything. It just means if you naturally are, are losing your ambitions, then don't be concerned when Jupiter, it, it will come back basically. Definitely economy of energy utilization is called for now. That's one of the things that Jupiter, especially in Sag, really wants when it goes into retrograde is how you are spreading yourself thin and how you can condense your efforts so that you can be much more productive. So basically fewer brilliantly, brilliantly placed actions are support that are supported by inner certainty are much better this month than just crazy haphazard action for the sake of itself. I really love this time for spring or down under fall uh, cleaning and I definitely love Marie Kondo's um, message to release anything that doesn't spark joy. This way you have surroundings and everything in your life with things only that spark joy. She's got two amazing books um, that I highly recommend and this is an amazing time for taking action on things like that. Definitely vision boards are well supported at this time. So the new year, the astrological new year started um, at the end of March, March 20th, when the sun moved into Aries. But the new year's kickoff party is when the new moon in Aries happens, which is on April 5th. So that's one of the best days of the whole year for a vision board and the days around there in this time. It's really great for putting things together to help you figure out what you wanna create this year. It's a really wonderful time for planting seeds. Something interesting about this month is that most of the days that have sweet aspects are completely coupled with days that have challenging aspects. So there's not as much of um, an easy time to say, this time is good, this time is challenging. You know, we've got a few days right in the beginning of the month where there's a series of sweet aspects, but then pretty much for the rest of the month, there's just like, Dicey sweet, dicey sweet, dicey sweet. So just really, really tune in to how your personal flow is with these transits. That full moon on April 19th is definitely going to be um, very intense. It's a full moon at 29 degrees of Libra, so like culmination of relationship things. So definitely look out for surprises then. There are some sweet aspects that go along with that full moon and there's also some dicey ones that go along with that full moon, but definitely very intense. So if you want a detailed list of the dates of each of the aspects and what goes along with those, you can sign up for my free email newslet newsletter at anniehelpsyou.com. When you sign up for my free email newsletter, you also get access to my 28 day virtual coaching program, which is free when you sign up. So you can just go deep, deep, deep in with that. And then plus you'll get this written report in your inbox delivered a month early so that you can have, um, you know, a, a visual understanding of what's coming. AnnieHelpsYou.com, you can book a live reading with me. You can check out my astrology apprenticeship program if you resonate with how I do astrology and you'd love to learn with me. I also have some other wonderful vocational support courses that you can take as well as subliminals to help train your mind to create the life you want. I've got all kinds of other goodies on my site. If you'd like written reports, astrology reports, horoscopes from me, you can go to CozyBySweetStarlight.com for monthly written horoscopes that often have different information than is in my videos. And there are other blogs there as well too, lifestyle, natural lifestyle blogs. So definitely check those things out and you can check out my husband's website, iamhelios.com, I-A-M-H-E-L-I-O-S.com. He always has very interesting goodies there and he does tarot and astrology as well. So I would love for you to check out my new book, Radical Prayer, Transform Your Life and the World in 28 Days. This is an Amazon bestseller and it is wonderful for anyone who really wants to shift their experience in life in a very simple but powerful way with this beautiful little book. So I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.